Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today, we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com with the title Circular Logic. It's in the circular and satellite motion topic. So this is our introduction to centripetal force. In other words, what makes something go in a circle? So we know that acceleration describes a change in velocity. Okay. And we know velocity includes both speed and direction. So here we're talking about things going in a circle. They aren't necessarily going to be changing speed, but they'll definitely be changing direction. Okay, so acceleration is final minus initial. So if we have our V1 here and our V2 here, if we look at how much it changes from V1 to V2, we can put V2 over here next to V1 like we see in this picture. So V1 is here. In just a moment, V2 is going to be going in that direction. So if we draw it over here, we can see that the change between them, the change in velocity, which is going to lead to our acceleration, is pointed towards the center of the motion here, the center of this circular motion. And that's going to be really crucial as we learn here about centripetal force and centripetal acceleration. The acceleration is pointed towards the center of the circle. And we know all acceleration is caused by an unbalanced force. That means the net force here, if the acceleration is towards the center, the net force also has to be towards the center. Okay, so while the velocity is what we'll call tangential, it goes along the tangent of the circle, the uh, acceleration and the force are both radial. They go along the radius, in other words, towards the center. So all circular motion, all changes in direction are caused by force, forces pointed towards the center of the circular motion. So whenever you turn at all, you're doing part of a circle, and the force along that part of a circle is always towards the center of that circle. Let's look at a couple examples here. Oh, sorry. Notice the force is perpendicular to the direction the object is moving, since the object is moving tangential, and the force at any given moment is towards the center. All right, now let's take a look at a couple examples. If I can get it to click for me. There we go. So this is an event called the hammer throw. If you've never seen it, it's a track and field event. You can see there's like, a, I don't know, a 15 pound ball on the end of that. Uh, eight kilogram ball, perhaps 10 kilograms. And they put on that wire and they spin it and then they release it and throw it. Well, if we take a look at the moment while he's spinning it right now the ball is over here it's a little bit hard to see because it's pretty blurry you can see a little bit of its outline kind of right there and i wrote over the top of it too but it's moving in a circle like this and at this moment it's moving this direction and what does this hammer thrower have to do he has to pull it towards the center to make it move in a circle okay so it's moving tangential but he pulls it in a circle in towards the center and that forces it into a circle. Okay, you can tell he has to lean his whole body to keep it to provide enough force to keep turning it at the speed it's going. We'll get into all that later. Let's go do a second example, another fun little example here. This is a roller coaster ride. They put you inside like a drum and they spin you and you feel yourself being pushed against the wall. Well, that's really your body trying to go straight. We'll get into that also later. But the key that I want you to pick up here is that if you're being, if you're feeling pushed into the wall, that means the wall is pushing into you. Newton's third law, right? So if we take a look at that, we know the wall is pushing into you. That's going to be towards the center. It's a circular room. The only way, it, the only way it can provide a normal force like that is perpendicular to its surface, which would be towards the center. So while you're spinning around, and moving this way at this point in time, your force is towards the center. And that force, of course, causes the acceleration. You notice I color coded these. This matches what you'll see in the concept builder. You'll see blue arrows representing force, green arrows representing acceleration, and red arrows representing the velocity. So I'm only going to give you one example from the concept builder because you don't need a whole lot because it's really the same thing three times. So the concept builder, the key things to remember, velocity is always tangential to the circle of motion. Remember, that's kind of like along the circle, you could say. It doesn't curve with the circle because if there was no force, it would keep going straight. So it's a tangent to the circle. Then we can see that the acceleration is always pointing toward the center of the motion. It's radial. 
And because force causes the acceleration, they have to be in the same direction. Therefore, the force is always pointing towards the center of the motion. OK, so you'll get a bunch of questions like this that may ask for force like it does here, or it may be red and ask for velocity, or it could be green and ask for acceleration. You click this change button and as you click it, you'll notice the uh, arrow over here uh, change 45 degrees at a time every time you click it. And you just want to make sure you end with the force pointing towards the center. OK, here's the center. So whichever of these points you're at, make sure the force points towards the center. Likewise, the acceleration would point towards the center. If you were asked about acceleration, click the button until the acceleration points towards the center. And if you're ever asked about velocity, notice carefully the direction it's going, which I believe it always goes clockwise. Um, at least for me, when I ran through it just now, it was always clockwise. And so that means if we were at point C here, we'd be moving along the tangent such that it's clockwise, okay? If we're at F over here, we'd uh, be moving along the tangent as though it were clockwise. If you learned a little bit about centripetal force and acceleration here and circular motion, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and have fun puzzling out the centripetal force, centripetal acceleration, and velocity on the Concept Builder, and we'll catch you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beardman.